Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to do something a little bit different. What we're going to do is let YouTube Analytics pick my next video. It's funny thing is, if you go into the Channel Analytics, the inspiration section of it, it looks at your channel and says, what are people looking for? And says, hey, make a video about this. And what it's telling me to do is make a video about the best frameworks for game development. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I actually did this about a year ago. It's a good topic. I actually kind of enjoy this one. Before we jump into it, this video was brought to you by TechSmith, the makers of Camtasia, the product that is literally bringing you this video. They have a sale going on right now. More about that at the end of the video. All right, let's go. So what we're going to do is run through what the best frameworks are for game development. Now, there is no best, by the way. So if you're here listening for a single answer, it's not going to happen. And the other thing we're going to do is talk about what frameworks are first, or specifically what frameworks aren't. Frameworks are not full game engines. So what you see here, Unreal Engine, this is not a framework. Uh, the Unity game engine, not a framework. Godot, uh, Default, Flax, uh, Firefox, Cocos Creator, none of these are frameworks, they're game engines. And normally what the distinction is, is the amount of tooling built in. A framework, I'm sorry, a game engine generally has a level editor and all the tooling integrated into kind of an application that you use to create your games. Frameworks are more, take the pieces that you need and build your additional tooling on top type setups. First, we're gonna start with some 2D frameworks. And a lot of these have been around for a very long time. So the first one we've got is SDL. And SDL has been used to make literally hundreds and hundreds of games. Uh, it is a cross-platform layer for doing things like input, graphics, uh, basic audio, keyboard, mouse, and so on. It abstracts away the underlying like OpenGL Vulkan rendering that's going on behind the scenes. I guess it's OpenGL and Direct 3D rendering going on behind the scenes. And it just basically provides you a C-level API for creating your games. It is tried, it is tested, it is proven. There are bindings available for an absolute ton of languages. And honestly, you can't really go wrong with SDL. Now, SDL is purely 2D as the next couple that we we're going to talk about are. But if you're using the C programming language and you want something that's very mature, SDL, solid choice. Now, if you like SDL, but you'd rather be working with C++, you have SFML. This was directly inspired by SDL, but this is SDL made with C++. Again, open source, been around for a very long time, uh, very mature at this point in time, has language bindings for a number of different programming languages, uh, and is multi-platform with uh, some limitations. It took a very long time to come to iOS and there's still some limitations when you're dealing with iOS. But if you're making mostly for PC type or uh, computer type environments, a good pickup there if you want to work with C++. I did a tutorial series about SFML when I first started this channel. Another option we have is Allegro. Now, fun fact, Allegro was actually, I think maybe the very first framework that I ever actually worked with. It started life on uh, either the Atari or the Amiga series of computers and was eventually ported over to be um, on desktop traditional PCs. Uh, supports Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iPhone, and Android. It is a C API. Obviously, you can use it with C++. The backend rendering is OpenGL and Direct3D. Truth of the matter is, all three of the frameworks we talked about right now could be interchanged. And this thing is continuing to get updated. Now, interestingly enough, the guy that started Allegro, uh, he actually went on to work on the XNA team at Microsoft. Spoiler alert, we're going to hear a little bit about that one later on as well. Uh, and then we have probably the modern successor to all of these. It's kind of took inspiration from every application we just talked about and made it very simple to work with is Raylib. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, you'll know that Raylib is it's one of my favorites for introduction to C programming. So if you want to do C programming game development, Raylib is just really simple to work with. Like you can see here, this is pretty much all the documentation you need. It's all the functions that it works with. They're all super straightforward. And the description on the right tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Ton of examples out there for Raylib. And the other thing about Raylib is it's on every platform you can conceive of, and it has language bindings for every programming language you can think of. Again, very similar in what they do. And you can't go wrong with any of these ones I just mentioned, SDL, SFML, Allegro, Raylib, and the one I'm forgetting, all great choices. If you wanna work with, uh, a low level 2D uh, programming language type setup. It, that's what these frameworks are all great for. And then we've got Cocos 2DX. Now Cocos 2DX has a very long history. I think it started as Cocos for 
Python. Uh, it's been ported to a variety of different platforms, and then it sort of became like the 2D framework of choice for the early iPhone. And then there was a C port of it, which is Cocos 2DX, and Cocos 2DX is probably the most mature of them. It's probably also the most complicated of the ones I've mentioned so far, but there are a ton of ship titles created using Cocos 2DX. So again, it's kind of in the same scope as all of the ones we just talked about, but again, a little bit more complicated, I would argue. And then we move on to other programming languages. One of the great choices for programming languages, especially if you're just starting out, is Lua. Lua is the kind of programming language you could learn the basics of in a weekend. And if you want to create a, um, a game or a media application using uh, the Lua programming language, Love is an excellent choice to start. There's other choices out there, but you see, this is all you do. You want to draw graphics on the screen, you call the function love.draw, and then you implement your code. Same thing, you want to load some graphics, call this code, Super simple, super easy to work with. And you may notice a game you've probably heard of on here because I am currently very addicted to Bellatro. Uh, and that's that's basically it. That is the, um, the very easy to learn framework for Lua programmers. Highly recommend checking that one out if you are using Lua. Next up, we have a Java choice. Now this is actually one of the places where I actually started this channel. Uh, so early on, SFML and libgdx are really where this channel took off doing tutorials from. Uh, gives you an idea of how long these have been around. This is the ultimate framework for 2D game development using um, the Java programming language. You can also use it with Kotlin, by the way, if you want to not, if you want to stay the hell away from Java. Kotlin is a very viable option from JetBrains, this programming language they make. Great choice as well. LibGX has been used to create a ton of successful computer uh, commercial games out there as well. Uh, and it's, again, still being updated, still being continued. The original developer has moved on. He works on other projects now. Uh, but LibGDX, still going strong. And it's a really comfortable framework. It reminds me a lot of XNA just for Java. So uh, great choice if you are a Java or Kotlin developer is LibGDX. And then we're moving into the world of HTML. Now there are a ton of frameworks in HTML or we got also in the world of HTML, there's a lot more libraries that you can slot together just kind of create your own framework from like low level renderers like Pixie as an example. The one I'm gonna focus on today is Phaser because Phaser frankly is probably the biggest ecosystem and I'm actually a big fan of Phaser in general. So if you're looking for a 2D game framework for JavaScript or TypeScript that does it all, highly recommend you go ahead and check out Phaser. Next up, we have Hackslixel. As you may be able to guess from the name, Hacks is the program language here. Now, Flixel was a um, action script or a Flash framework, probably the most popular Flash framework. And well, we all know what happened to Flash, but Hackslixel basically took up that Flixel um, mentality and moved it over to the Hacks programming language. I've done a tutorial series on working with Hackslixel as well. So if you're using the Hacks language, Hackslixel is definitely one that is worth checking out. And then we have Monogame. Now I've mentioned XNA a number of times and XNA was one of the smartest and dumbest things that Microsoft ever did. They created a game framework for indie developers before indie developers really was known as a thing. And they enabled you to be, you could actually make Xbox games on your PC without having any kind of special license or anything else. You use their built-in special version of Visual Studio and you used a framework called XNA. XNA was lovely. People absolutely loved XNA and it was used to create a ton of pretty successful games such as Celeste that you see over here. And uh, Monogame was a cross-platform port of it. So this was so you could run your games on uh, iOS, Android, Linux, Mac, and so on. And then XNA kind of went away and Monogame kind of took over the crown. So if you want to work with the C Sharp programming language or other .NET programming language, you can make games for all kinds of platforms. It is free, it is open source, and I loved XNA. People still love XNA. And this is, uh, Monogame is the spiritual successor to XNA. And it's so stupid that Microsoft stopped supporting XNA. It's still a crying shame to this day. But Monogame is not the only option out there. There's also FNA. Now, FNA and Monogame differ in that Monogame basically is replacing all of the tools that came with XNA as well. And it's making some changes, quality of life improvements, and so on. Whereas FNA is a straight up one for one reproduction of XNA. So if you have your XNA game, and again, you can see some of the more popular games that were actually created using XNA, things like Bastion. 
this was a porting library so you could move those to other platforms. And it's since evolved again, but it stays really strict to what FNA was all about across various different platforms. It just gives you a modern supported version. Both are perfectly viable options, by the way, although I would argue that Mono Game is probably the easier one to get started with. And then we're moving on to the world of 3D. Now, we're not going to cover a ton of 3D frameworks today, but there are some. Again, the reason why these are frameworks is because they don't have editors. Although Babylon.js kind of sort of has an editor, but we're going to ignore that for this video. Now, Babylon.js is heavily sponsored by Microsoft. It is a really robust uh, 3D framework for the web, and you might be shocked with just how much this guy can actually do. It's also got the sandbox, which again, kind of close to a, a level editor. Uh, was it sandbox or playground? One of these two is kind of like a light level editor. It almost technically should not make this list, uh, but it is an excellent framework. So if you're doing 3D work in JavaScript or TypeScript or for your browser, uh, Babylon JS is worth checking out. By the way, there's another one called Play Canvas. It technically has an editor available as well, but there is just a framework version if you want to go ahead and check out Play Canvas and just completely ignore the editor. It would technically qualify to be on this list. Uh, then we've got 3JS. Now, 3JS is lower level. 3JS maybe doesn't deserve to be on this list because it's more like... Um, it's more like a renderer level. It's more like Pixie JS was for 2D JavaScript, but it also does a bunch more and it is actually underpins a lot of 3D JavaScript projects out there. It's one of those ones, I think I just mostly want to be made aware of it because it, I don't know if it belongs in this list or not, but 3JS is definitely an interesting project, one that you should check out, especially if you want to go a little bit lower level when it comes to 3D. And then we get into Ogre. Now, Ogre has been around for a very long time, and it continued to be updated. Ogre 14.3 was actually just released a couple of weeks back. This is a very mature 3D framework that does pretty much everything you want. It's just there's no editor. So you would have to use something like um, Blender or Max or Meyer or whatever to do your world building. Other than that, it has pretty much all the features that you could need for 3D game development. It's a C++ framework, and it is open source. And then for if you are working in 3D, but you are using uh, the Python programming language instead, Panda 3D is an excellent choice. Now, Panda 3D was actually used to create Toontown Online um, and a few other MMOs at Disney Works or whatever Disney's online program used to be called. Uh, they have spun it off. It is also supported by Carnegie Mellon. So it was a joint venture between Disney and Carnegie Mellon. Very strange that way, but you will be amazed at just what actually Panda 3D can do. So if you are a... Um, a Python developer looking for a full-blown, commercially viable 3D game framework, Panda is definitely worth checking out. Uh, and then we have lower level stuff. This one is uh, a cross-platform rendering library. So again, it's kind of more in that 3JS, but this one is for C and C++, is we have BGFX. This abstracts away some of the low level stuff and it provides some tooling for you so you could build the framework on top of it. Again, it skirts the line of does it deserve to be on this list or not. And then we have a Rust example. Now, I mentioned earlier on Firox. Now, Firox is another Rust framework, but it has a level editor. Bevy currently does not, although I think within about a year to two years, that will change. Now, Bevy is an ECS or Entity Component System based uh, Rust framework. It's been, it's a very interesting project, one that I've been following with every single release they do. If I ever learn the Rust programming language, it's gonna be playing around with Bevy. Highly recommend checking it out if you are using Rust. And that's it. That is uh, some of the best frameworks out there for game development. Now, I'm actually just scratching the surface. If I just made a giant list of all the frameworks, there are things out there I could have mentioned, like the Armory framework, which builds and runs inside of um, the Blender programming languages and uses a hacks language. But th then it would just be a giant list of game frameworks. I wanted to kind of refine it down to some of the most popular choices out there and why you might pick them. So hopefully you guys found that useful. And now uh, back to that sale I talked about from TechSmith at the beginning of the video. So if you head on over to techsmith.com or use the link down below, it will bring you here. Primetime flash sale, 20% off site-wide, two days only. Shop now. What you'll find is 
Uh, all of their products, asterisk, are 20% off. So Camtasia, 20% off. Snagit, their screen capture utility, 20% off. Even their asset libraries. These are actually really cool. If you're using uh, TechSmith products, their uh, actual assets collection are a lot cheaper than a lot of other sources. And they integrate nicely into these programs. And then uh, here's the asterisk. Screencast, it's a subscription. It is, it is not. I actually don't know anything about that product, though. So uh, their major products, though, Camtasia, Snagit, and the assets for both of those are all available 20% off for the next two days. So that would be ending Wednesday at midnight, I believe, Pacific Data Time. So check that out. Thank you for sponsoring TechSmith. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, a little bit over a dozen of the top game development frameworks. Obviously, best is a very relative term, but let me know what you think. And did I miss one that you honestly think I should have included? Let me know that in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.